Howdy guys, IndiePixel here. And in this Intro to Vex lecture or video, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start to take it a step further. Now we've taken a, a look at uh, how to create basic noises. So we're starting to get a little bit more into 3D shapes uh, with Vex and stuff like that instead of just processing, you know, uh, lines and just dealing with searching for points and stuff like that. So what I wanted to do in this particular video is talk about how to create this pyramid shape here. All right, um, because right off the bat, it's not quite clear how you would go about doing something like this with Vex completely. Now, you can completely do this uh, using a set of nodes um, and you could create a uh, pyramid shape quite quickly. And I'll show you that after we do the, uh, the Vex version because um, it's important to start to understand how you can start working with the shape and stuff like that of um, just a simple grid and how we can turn it into a pyramid really quickly. Because what it does is it teaches us how to start utilizing blend modes, um, how to start to modify our bounding box sizes and stuff like that. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through the process of setting up the, the math to produce a pyramid. All right, fun little exercise so let's drop down a geometry node here and i'm just going to call this pyramid video like so all right and i'm going to jump inside and what i want to do is hide the current pyramid that we have i don't want to see it or anything like that i'm also going to get rid of the shelf and all this timeline so a little more space for the video less distracting and stuff like that so i'm going to drop down a grid over here and what we're going to do with this grid is we're going to get a few of these uh, parameters all set up. So the uh, first thing I, I really want to do is just copy this parameter, the size X, and set it to the size Y, all right, or size Z in this case. And then just copy um, these rows and columns so I can just move one slider. Just It'll just uh, really make it e a lot easier on us uh, while we're working. So I actually want to give this quite a few... Um, divisions basically in the, the rows and columns or the X and Z directions here. And the next thing that I want to do is drop down that attribute wrangle. Again, you can go and drop down a point uh, wrangle for this if you want. Uh, same exact thing. You can see that the attribute wrangle starts with points and the point wrangle has the same exact settings. So just to show you guys that the nodes really uh, for the wrangles have just been set up as like presets basically. So if you just look up wrangle, you can see that they're just sending you presets for these things. Okay, so uh, let's go into this wrangle and we're just gonna call this the uh, pyramid shape right here. So pyramid shape, like so. And the first thing I wanna do is get the size of this grid, just the size, okay? And you'll see why here pretty soon. So we've seen this before, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this the grid size and we're gonna use that get BB box size and feed in the zero index because that's the index that we're feeding the geometry into, okay? And so uh, from there, what I wanna do is I want to start to compare the X and Z directions um, to that size, okay? So to do that, um, and I'm, what I'm gonna do is pump this into these colors just so that way we can visualize it. Now, you don't have to, you can always put this into a local variable so it can be like, you know, uh, X um, gradient, is equal to what we're about to type in. But in this case, I, I want to be able to visualize it for you guys. But I also do this quite a bit uh, in my day-to-day -day work, um, just so I can see it while I'm working. Um, and then once I'm happy with the results, I'll move it all into uh, local variable or attributes and then view it through the geometry spreadsheet. All right, because we don't want to mess with the, the vertex colors too much until you know we really want to pack data into it. Okay, so uh, let's first start out by just comparing the, the uh, let's look on the x direction here. So we're going to compare the current x position. So we're just going to take the position of every point. Okay, so for every single one of these little dots here, every single one of those points, we're going to look at that x uh, position and compare it to the size. All right, and that will give us a, a particular gradient value. So what I can do is I can say, um, at p dot x divided by uh, the size, so this grid size uh, variable that we created, dot x, like so. And so we can take a look at just that, 
And we also need to make sure that we actually zero out our color because it's set to white or one by default. Okay. So now what we're getting is a gradient. So it's a positive gradient, gradient from zero to one in the positive x direction. And we're getting a zero to negative one. So if you look at all these CDR values or the R channel of the color for this, we're getting negative values basically. And it's actually going to negative 0 0.05, not negative one. Okay. So it's very important to understand that. So um, what we want to do now is we want to create a different type of gradient. Okay. So in order to get all of these into positive values, we need to use that absolute function. So I'm going to type out ABS. So it's the absolute value. So even if the X position or the X component of the current position of the point is negative, it'll still pump out a positive value. And so what that does is it gives us a gradient now that goes from 0.5 to 0 to 0.5. All right, so we're getting this kind of bell curve, if you will. Cool. So in order to get this to go from 1 to 1, in this case, because it'll be a, it'll go from 1 to 0 to 1, right? Because currently, remember, we're going from 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. Uh, we just need to multiply this by 2, the grid size. And there we go. So now we're going from 1 all the way down to 1. <laughs> I'm looking for the 0. It's around here somewhere. Anyways, um, so we're, yeah, we're going from 1 to 0 to 1. Okay? Cool. So what I really want to do in this case is I want to flip this, um, in this case, for the pyramid itself. So uh, all I need to do is just do a 1 minus for all this, and now we get a gradient that goes from 0 to 1 to 0. All right, so if we were to actually pump that into the y position currently, so we'll say plus equals at cd.r, like so, we'll get this roof shape. And it's a perfect gradient. All right, let's do something like times 2. And this is why this is very important, especially when you start working with the Houdini engine, because... When you start working with the Houdini engine, uh, while, while it's super awesome and I love working with the Houdini engine, the more that you can put into wrangle notes, the faster your tools are going to work. You know, currently we just see, we see a lot of tools that are being developed that are just using the nodes that are available to you inside of Houdini, which is fine. It's totally possible, totally valid. There's nothing wrong with that. There's just a speed issue there. So the more that you can put into these wrangle nodes, the faster your Houdini engine tools will work inside of Unreal and inside of Unity. Okay, so quick tip there. And that's why I love teaching this stuff because, you know, understanding these kind of smaller components is very key to, you know, being successful at making tools for the Houdini engine. Okay, so now that we've got that side going, all right, so this is basically half of our pyramid. What we want to do is we want to pump in the other side of the ramp. So in the green channel. We are going to do the same thing. So we're going to do the absolute value, but this time we're going to test, well, in this case, the, the Z direction, right? Because our grid is on the X Z plane. Okay. And so I want to test that and we want to divide it by the uh, grid size dot Z times two, same thing, same exact thing. And that's really just because we want a direction. And you can start to see really faintly the pyramid design. And that's because we're using two gradients blended together. All right. So if we were to actually test just the green side here now, you can see we get a roof shape on the other side. So we got the red and the green. All right. Super useful stuff. Cool. So how do we get this into a pyramid shape? Well, now we need to start working with blend modes. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, position offset there. All right. And let's just put in a couple comments here just so we can keep things nice and clean and professional too. Right. So we're going to get the BB box size and we're also going to then create our uh, gradients. All right. There we go. And 
what we then want to do is we want to do a blend mode. So we want to use the min blend mode, all right? So let's take a look at this. Okay, so finally what we're going to do is we're going to say float shape, okay? There we go, is equal to the min of our at cd.r and at cd.g. And now if we were to pump that into our at p.y plus equals shape, what you'll start to see is a rough pyramid shape. Boom, just like so. So if we were to multiply that by something, let's do four this time. All right, we have a pyramid, perfect pyramid. And we did that all with just a couple of lines of code. Well, I should say it, it's a few lines of code. It's not a couple, right? So there you go, a few lines of code. But that's still uh, negligible compared to how many nodes you'd have to use in order to create this particular shape. Not that there would be a lot of nodes, and I'm going to show that here in just a second. But that is how you go about creating a pyramid shape inside of Vex. So very powerful. And, you know, as... As I dive more into the noises and more into these 3D shapes, we'll get into parabolas, um, cones, um, you know, different types of noises and stuff like that, and functions uh, or plotting functions and stuff like that to create shapes, basically. All right, so there we go. That's how we uh, create a pyramid shape. So let's take a look at the easier, well, I should say the node-based way. It's not easier. Um, both are super valid and both are relatively easy. Uh, you just have to understand VEX and once you understand VEX and a little bit of math, um, this is easy too. So let's take a look at the other way to do this. So if I wanted to create a pyramid without writing any code or any VEX code, uh, what I would do is I'd start with a grid like so and I would just make the, the uh, simple grid. So I do have a preset for that, but I'll just uh, put two and two in here for you guys. So I just want a simple grid here with no rows and columns basically okay and what I want to do is I want to then copy the size X into the size Z here okay and I'm gonna drop down a poly extrude node and the way that we're gonna do this is I am going to copy again this size X value here and I'm just gonna paste that into the inset and the reason why that works is because it's going to inset at the same size all right so we're just gonna paste that relative and boom we all automatically have a point right in the middle and we can pump this up to four and you can see that we actually have a pyramid perfect um, the last thing we really need to do is just take care of the the two points that are at the top here because the the inset as far as i can tell doesn't fuse it automatically so you'd have to drop the fuse node down like so and there you go so now we just have the single point at top there we go excuse me there we go Let's just pull that up. There we go. Perfect. Now we have a perfect pyramid. And if you wanted to close the bottom of this, uh, you would just go and put in a polyfill. So polyfill, and it will set this to single polygon, and voila. Perfect pyramid shape. And you would control the, the height of this through that uh, distance. All right. Let's actually do so. There we go. Whereas inside of the pyramid shape here, uh, we would want to put in a ramp, or not a ramp, but a uh, channel float. So CHF, and we'll just call this height, and then just make sure that we actually produce that parameter and set that to something like five. And there we go. So now we can go and adjust that the same exact way. So two different ways, uh, almost the same results. Uh, I can tell you just from experience, this will run faster inside of the Houdini engine. This will run slower. And obviously, if, if this is all you're making with an HDA inside of the Houdini engine, um, it'll be hard to tell. But if you start creating more complex HDAs for Unity and Unreal using the Houdini engine, um, it's highly recommended to start using the Wrangles because they'll move faster. They're all multi-threaded. Uh, whereas all this, you're going to get a lot of just overhead with with all these other nodes because you're not using a lot of the different other features. You're just using a single feature, right? We're just, there's a lot of stuff that goes with this and this is pretty bare bones. Okay. So that is that 
I'll leave you guys there and uh, we'll start to do some more of these shapes um, as we get further into this whole series. Really appreciate it, everybody. I'll talk to you guys here in a bit. Thanks so much.